Ladies and gentlemen, I am extremely pleased now to be joined by Dr. Michel Paré. He is a member of the Board of Managing Directors at Boehringer Ingelheim, and his key responsibility is for the Innovation Unit, which includes all of the company's R&D. Michelle, extremely happy that you've been able to join me today. I understand that in this time of crisis, you have committed more than 100 scientists and more than 11,000 lab hours to COVID-19 research in various international consortia, and in fact, you expect to expand beyond this point. Can we start by uh, talking about what specific therapies you have in flow and what gives you hope that this effort's going to yield some results? It's all about passionate people and well-functioning teams. Our scientists are highly motivated by the sense of purpose, the science, and first promising experimental data. They don't count hours. I also feel the right uh, team attitude in the consortia we've joined. They bring together scientists with uh, different backgrounds from the industry, biotech, and academic world. They all contribute by doing what they are good at. In the case of uh, Beringer Engelheim, the assets and skills that we can bring are first for the short term existing molecules already approved on or in our development pipeline which have the potential to either uh, demonstrate direct antiviral effects or to block uh, tissue damage induced by the viral infection and second for the longer term drug discovery platforms to discover new molecules including chemical molecules as well as antibodies to which will be specifically designed against SARS-CoV-2. Thank you. And what about, okay, so that sounds great, but uh, what about the longer term? Are you doing anything which uh, in the future will enable us to get <clears throat> more quickly to this point, uh, given our international lack of preparedness for, for this uh, situation? Okay, for, for, the, for the longer term, it's what I mentioned is to based on our a drug discovery platform. That is where we can contribute. With the help of other, I think, uh, partners who will be able to try to predict the next uh, uh, virus, the next uh, infection. And I think that based on our drug discovery platform, be it uh, chemical molecules or be it antibodies, we will be able to also uh, have an accelerated uh, path towards uh, development path toward approval towards uh, 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 supply to the to the patient. I think the fastest timelines will be for novel antibodies. Here we are uh, working. Our scientists are working on with four different complementary platforms for as a source of uh, novel antibodies. First, lab method, like uh, a phage display. Second, uh, humanized mice, which are immunized against the uh, virus uh, protein. Third, antibodies isolated from the blood of persons who have recovered from the infection. And fourth, computational structure-based antibody design. We are convinced that uh, by combining these uh, four complementary platforms, we can maximize uh, the rapid delivery of a diverse set of antibodies. First candidates were identified and they are being tested by uh, partner labs, part of our uh, consortia for uh, viral neutralizing effects. If everything goes well, uh, we might uh, start uh, first in human studies before end of year. And here we have to build with the National Health Authority to further accelerate the development path to approval for these particularly urgent situations. That's great. Uh, timing is obviously absolutely critical, and those are obviously difficult, ambitious, but uh, uh, very desirable timelines. Um, so that was the, you just 
spoke about when we hope to get the first uh, human trials, but what about uh, the development pipeline beyond that point? Can you give us any other sense of what the timing could be? Uh, the, 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 timing, the timing will be different if we consider uh, new discovery activities and uh, building on the existing molecule. Uh, if we build an existing molecule, the timing can be rather fast. Currently, for our sh what we call short-term approach, uh, the most advanced project is a tissue plasminogen activator, ActiPlate. Uh, which is the current gold standard for the treatment of uh, embolic uh, stroke. Uh, due to its mechanism of action, ActiPlase also has the potential to block hypercoagulation and uh, reduce organ failure in the most severe cases of uh, COVID-19. In, in this case, two clinical studies are ongoing, one under compassionate use in the US, supported by Roche Genentech and one investigator initiated study in the UK supported by Beringer uh, in the lab. First results are expected in two to four weeks. If these uh, results for, from this small, I have to mention, small still exploratory studies are promising, we will decide with our partner and with the National Health Authority on the fastest way forward. For the New dis drug discovery activities, I think a clinical development, taking the example of an antibody, a clinical development for a chronic indication takes five to, se to seven years. For an acute indication, might take three to five years. For this urgent situation, uh, we, should, we should shoot for much faster, it's difficult to give uh, to give timelines, but I would shoot for two to two and a half years. Um, do you find that obviously you are having to invest in these kind of type, uh, timelines, but do you find that the wider community of stakeholders, of regulators, of other supporting bodies are also uh, able to relax some of the barriers that might have faced uh, R&D in the past and generally having a, a, a more aligned attitude is something presumably that, that exists now and might exist for the future as well? Yes, I, I do see a climate for, for better collaboration. And a key aspect is the willingness of the national authorities, health authorities, to work with pharmaceutical and biotech companies on accelerated development paths to approvals without, of course, putting at risk uh, patient safety and uh, uh, product quality. And I think what we can learn, one thing we can learn from this crisis is uh, the need most likely to extend this approach to other life-threatening diseases in the future. Mm. Um, one concern that I have and which uh, others have uh, spoken about who are also working on therapies and vaccines that could uh, alleviate this crisis is uh, the fact that we might be taking research away from other equally vital areas in the eyes of patients. So, you know, what made you decide on this form of commitment and are you worried about some of your other programs? This is the, the clear advantage of a, a fully family-owned company uh, since more than 130 years with a clear values, a long-term vision and a sustainable approach. In addition, solid performance in previous years uh, also represents a strong basis for our company to help society during the crisis while maintaining our investment levels to ensure the discovery, development and supply of innovative medicine in the disease areas that we've defined as our disease areas of focus globally. So you mentioned globally and so far this is a disease which is really unlike many others, struck the developed world first. But we all know that the effects could be far, far worse in the developing world where social distancing and the, uh, the capacity for, for healthcare is lower. Um, 
I'm just wondering whether you believe that we as an industry have underinvested in these developing economies to date. They, we could have perhaps helped uh, make a better infrastructure. And is there anything that we can do now that might alleviate this potentially very high toll of severe cases in COVID-19? Focus on vulnerable communities uh, is fully in line with uh, Beringer and Golan's value. Already in 2010, we launched Making More Health, a partnership with the NGO Ashoka. The Making More Health purpose is to make vulnerable communities in developing economies healthier and more sustainable. Since 2010, we've supported over 100 social entrepreneurs, uh, creating a positive impact on the health of uh, uh, people more than 10, close to 10 million people in uh, 40 countries. During now, in the context of the COVID-19 crisis, Making More Health has launched a specific COVID-19 relief fund, which by building on the existing Making More Health social networks, local social networks in the countries, is helping social entrepreneurs manage and surmount the longer period of uh, low economic activity and focus on reducing the risk of uh, the coronavirus uh, spreading. Very interesting. Um, well, I obviously wish you good, good luck with, uh, with that, with that uh, very significant effort, and I hope that other companies will also follow suit. But you also have something called Research Without Borders, and if I understand that's a, a different thing. It's not so much a geographical border we're talking about. Um, tell me why you set that up and, uh, you know, should research ever have borders in the first place? There are, unfortunately, so many diseases with uh, high unmet medical need. And uh, unfortunately, we cannot address all these diseases in parallel. We have selected disease areas of focus for our research and development activities, which includes both internal and external efforts. However, we don't want to miss the opportunity to explore diseases and technologies beyond our current R&D focus in order to serve an urgent need, that's the example of COVID-19, or to prepare a potential future entry into a new field. And this is the clear positioning of uh, Research Beyond Border, a small core group within our research organization with uh, the clear mandate and uh, freedom to look and think out of the box and to place smart bets into emerging science and technologies by building on research collaborations with academic institutes. Mm. Um, and now looking into um, the longer term, our industry, even before COVID-19, we were facing a general sustainability issue with rising costs of R&D for every real unit of value that we were able to create. So I'm interested in whether Research Without Borders and whether the company in general is focusing more on external innovation and how you're able to sort of differentiate yourselves with, within the you know, very complex ecosystem to ensure that you guys are the partner of choice for biotechs, for academia, for whoever originates a drug in the first place? First of all, uh, considering our pipeline, the number of projects with, uh, based on external innovation represent roughly 30% of our, our existing development pipeline. Early research collaborations on new disease mechanisms and uh, new technology platforms not count. Our clear, posi clear positioning is on the science. I think that uh, Beringer Ingelheim is recognized as an open science-driven partner. In line with our positioning on the science, our focus is more on early stage assets in a preclinical or early clinical stage without excluding, of course, on a case-by-case -case basis, later stage uh, uh, assets. To access uh, the best of external innovation, we want that each internal scientist is a scout for external innovation. To support our scientists, 
we are using various complementary tools to access external innovation. First, business development and licensing, a traditional way to access development assets for our disease areas of focus. Second, research beyond borders that I uh, briefly introduced with the goal to explore emerging science and technologies uh, by building on research collaboration with academic institutes. Third, our corporate venture fund, which de facto has a similar strategic goal as Research Beyond Border, exploring emerging science and technologies, but is using a different approach, investing in scientific entrepreneurs, helping them found their biotech company and develop their concept. And fourth, our open innovation portal, OpenMe, and our curiosity-driven uh, research institute, the Institute for Molecular Pathology in Vienna, Austria, that we see as door openers to uh, academic uh, scientists and innovators. Excellent. So, yeah, some really innovative work uh, with the, uh, you know, every internal scientist being a scout for external innovation. And of course, the uh, open innovation portal is, is very interesting. I look forward to seeing how both of these initiatives uh, really develop uh, going forward and indeed your, your corporate venture fund. Uh, and I also see that uh, you've made a partnership with uh, in Silico Medicine. Um, what gives you the confidence that uh, the AI dominant approach is actually going to really produce results. We haven't seen many concrete successes so far. The project you, you just mentioned uh, aims at uh, developing a deeper understanding of the mechanisms and pathway for one of our uh, preclinical projects. It's based on our multi omics database and the algorithm developed by InSilico. This is one example of the potential application of augmented intelligence in research and development. There is, a, of course, a broad scope of potential application of uh, uh, augmented intelligence uh, in uh, research and development along uh, the value chain. Uh, obviously, some will deliver faster than others. And uh, I think that the success of uh, machine learning and augment, augmented intelligence uh, approach depends on the quality of the data you base your analysis on. And at Beringer Engelheim, the, our most advanced project in this field is a drug design based on augmented intelligence because in that specific case, uh, we can build on a high quality database of uh, several hundred million data points points which has, has been uh, developed, uh, built uh, over several decades. And that's the, the key to success with uh, augmented intelligence uh, approaches. Dr. Michel Perret of Bering Ingelheim, thank you so much for talking to me. I wish you great fortune as you pursue all of these multiple efforts. And I hope that indeed your company can be at the leading edge of solving this humanitarian crisis and that indeed that uh, it's fulfilling your scientists and your company uh, at the same time. So, so thank you once again from me uh, for all of your efforts. Welcome.